Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. So, so today's class, class we're going to be talking about international health agencies, agencies and its regulations. Okay. So, so can, can anyone tell me uh, anything about international health? Like, like do you know anything, anything in the context of COVID-19 happening or no? regarding what, what happened since uh, coronavirus started last year? Like, like what the different countries did and how it pertains to international health? Can anybody, Can anybody tell me like what, what happened, happened last, last year when COVID-19 started? You've been reading the news, right, for the past year. So can somebody tell me what happened in regards to international health? What happened when uh, coronavirus started was detected in China last year? Tenzin Dolkar? Yes. Oh, yeah, you tell me something what happened last year when... COVID-19 started in China? Lockdown. <laughs> Before lockdown. Before lockdown, what happened? What happened to the WHO? Uh, it declared COVID-19 is pending. Which month was that? Um, last year. Um, when was the first? Huh? In March. Is it? When, when was, was the first case detected, detected in Wuhan? December, December uh, 2019. So 2019. So, 2019. so, so the, the World Health Organization, Organization declared it as a pandemic in? In January, right? Yeah. Was it January, January or March? I think it was February or something. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Don't know. Get about the date. Why, why, why did they have to declare it as a pandemic? pandemic? Because the cases were rising in all the continents. So, so what would happen if that, what, so what's, what's the consequence of that, that happening? Mm, uh, I Before it was declared as a pandemic, it was declared as a, as a public health emergency of international concern. Okay. So what was that? What is the consequence of that? If you think about keeping in mind international health. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you tell me uh, what, what is the consequences to international health when uh, this pandemic, I mean when COVID-19 was declared as a pandemic and a public health emergency of international concern. Why did they have to declare it in the first place? Yeah, in order to... Um, stop the spread from one continent to another. Okay, so there are rules, okay, in regards to international health, there are rules that each country must adhere to so as to prevent the spread of diseases. Now, there has been a lot of controversy regarding the, the, how the WHO handled the pandemic. Okay, even uh, they're doing investigations as to uh, how it was handled also. So, some people have been saying that it took too long to declare uh this pandemic uh, this disease is a pandemic okay now there are guidelines there are rules and regulations which countries must adhere to in relation to diseases which might have a capability of spreading through international borders okay so these guidelines are called as the international health regulations so can you see the slides can you see the slide yes Yes, right, okay. So, okay, this is what we're going to talk about, okay, in this one hour. So, we're going to talk about the international health regulations, public health emergency, international concern, and some international agencies which are of great importance to health. Okay, so this is the IHR. It came into, uh, it came into being in 2005. So, what is this IHR? IHR is the it's called the International Health Regulations. So it's legally binding and it helps countries to work together to protect lives threatened by the spread of diseases. So why do we need to talk about IHR? Because if diseases spread, they will pose as a health threat, right? And these diseases will cross international borders. They don't have any... Uh, it's not like they cannot cross borders. When there is a disease, it happens, it can easily cross. So this will pose as a threat to people, not only within that country, but in the neighboring countries. Like for example, when COVID started, the countries neighboring China were the first few countries that were affected were countries like what? 
like south korea right to have a border with china so it affects travel and trade it affects global health security and it and what happens is that we need to keep these this such diseases the potential of such diseases spreading under control so does anyone as has anyone heard of the word idsp has anyone heard of idsp has anybody heard of idsp you've been to phcs right recently last last few months so Each uh, PHC they have a surveillance system. Okay, what is the IDSP? Where diseases, whatever diseases which occur in the community, they have to keep a record of it. And if there is such a threat that diseases will spread, this surveillance system will help in giving this information. Now, what is an epidemic? Can somebody define what is an epidemic? What is an epidemic? Mary. Mary Van Laumi, Laumi, Mary, Mary is there or not? Yes, ma'am. What is an epidemic? Uh, no, it's okay if you don't know the exact definition. But what do you understand by epidemic? Uh, increase in the number of infection. More than expected. More than expected. Okay. So uh, what happens is under the under our country India we have this IDSP Integrated Disease Surveillance Project. Okay. So what do you do in IDSP? They have a list of all the diseases which occurs in the community. And if there is any disease which is more than what is expected, more than the normal, they're going to detect this disease and they're going to Do some sort of surveillance, okay, and we're going to find out if an epidemic has occurred or not. So under this IHR, each each country they have to have their own surveillance surveillance system, okay, and in India we have the IDSP system. So once these diseases are affected, the main job of the countries is to assess, report, and to respond. So detect, assess, report, and respond so that this disease won't spread beyond the community which is it, it is localized to. Okay, like for example, if COVID had started in India and there, it would have been recorded as fever of unknown origin, right? Fever of unknown origin. There'll be more cases, and IDSP will detect that oh, these, there has been too many cases of a fever of unknown origin in this area. We have to do something. So they'll conduct an assessment. And when they conduct the assessment, they go to report and respond. And if they find that it is problematic and it cannot be controlled and it's going to pose a danger to other countries, they have to report through the international health regulations to the WHO. Okay. So this is what should have happened in China. So I, the IHR is binding to all to 196 countries. Okay. They have to. It's legally binding. If they fail to report, they're going to get penalized. Okay. So. This is what IHR is, which is just basically a legally binding agreement between the different nations that if there is a spread of disease in that area, which is posing a threat to the public or to that it might have a danger of crossing borders, they're going to report it to the World Health Organization, so that they're going to take active active precautions to inform the other countries also about an impending threat. So now, what is this PHEIC? This PHEIC is a public health emergency of international concern. So, if any disease falls under this definition of PHEIC, which means it, a disease which is happening, like for example, COVID, it's an extraordinary event, right? Which uh, which constitute a public health risk, which is to other states, which can spread through international borders and will potentially require a coordinated international response. So COVID fit the definition of a public health emergency of international concern. So it was labeled as such early in 2020. So this is how the PHEIC will be notified through the IHR. So if, through the uh, surveillance system of each country, like in the, India, we have. IDSP. If we have any cases of smallpox, even one case of smallpox also it has to be notified. If we have a case of polio or human influenza or SARS, it has to be notified. And any event which is a potential threat to public health has to be notified. They're going to ask the question whether this public health impact is serious. If the answer is yes, you have to ask another question whether it's 
unusual or unexpected? And if the answer is still yes, then this event or that disease has to be notified to the WHO under the IHR. Yeah. So, see, look at what happened to COVID-19. Oh, these are the diseases here first, which have been declared by the WHO as public health emergencies of international concerns in the past few years. So, the, this is what happened to COVID-19. The first is, uh, case was detected in China and Wuhan in 2019. And it was declared as a public health emergency only in January 30th. So, it took them one whole month to even declare, but WHO took one whole month to declare this as a PHEIC. And it was only in March 11 when WHO declared it as a pandemic. Okay, that's why people want to penalize WHO for not taking action immediately. Okay, even after knowing that there was a uh, that there was a rare case of pneumonia that was happening in Wuhan, which can be a threat to uh, international to people to international border, they did not do anything. It took them a month to even declare it as a PHEIC. So this is IHR and PHEIC. So if you get a short note on this, you can just tell what is what is IHR, when it was formulated, then what are the diseases which are classified as public health emergency concern. You can talk about the flow chart, the different countries which are being bounded by the international health regulations, and then you'll get five marks. Yeah. So you can give an example of coronavirus since it's the most recent pandemic that has happened. Now, what about World Health Organization? So this, this World Health Organization might come as a short note. So you remember, do you know who's the Director General of WHO? Can anybody tell me who's the Director General of WHO? He was in the news so many times last year. Simon Tedros. Yeah, he's from where? I don't know, ma'am. Okay. So, what is what is the role of WHO? What is the role of this director general? What is his responsibility? Do you think you've seen him in the news every day, right, for the last one year? So, what do you think is the responsibility of the director general? What do you think is the responsibility of the WHO? Uh, like, as to look over the organization as a whole, like, okay. uh, like he will decide the ultimate things, what to do, and what not to. Okay. Anything else? When is World Health Day? No, ma'am. When is World Health Day? A April, April 7th. Yeah, April 7th. 7th April. So why is it celebrated as World Health Day on 7th April? Lal Ram Nghaka. Lal Ram Nghaka. Lal Ram Nghaka. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, why is uh, 7th April celebrated as World yes, Health Day? Any idea? Uh, no, ma'am. No. Does anybody know anyone who will volunteer to answer? There's a specific reason why 7th April is denoted as World Health Day. 7th April is being uh, labeled as World Health Day is because when it started, the WHO came into force on 7th April, came back in 1948. So what happened is after the First World War, they, the different countries, they decided that they want an organization to be there, an international organization which is going to man the health activities that is happening uh, in different countries, okay, kind of like a general body and who's going to decide what to do when outbreaks happen in different countries, how are, how are these going to be taken care of, okay? So through that, the World Health Organization was formulated. Now, the, the interesting thing about the World Health Organization is that it has three bodies, okay? And it has its own secretariat, its own World Health Assembly, and its own executive board. So different countries who are uh, part member countries, they, they give money okay, to the World Health Organization and the, they will decide, the executive board will decide what they're going to do with that money. Okay. So this is how the budget of the World Health Organization came into being. So different countries, they give money and it depends upon the financial capability of the different countries. The countries which have more, they're going to donate more. For example, like the USA, USA is the country which is giving a lot of financial assistance in 
to the WHO. China is after the World Health Organization. Does anyone of you remember uh, last year in 2020, there was a big hue and cry when the then President Donald Trump refused to give sanctions to the WHO? Does anybody remember that? He was blaming the WHO for everything that happened with COVID-19 and he said that he wouldn't give them the sanctions that they normally give to World Health Organization. And the World Health Organization really suffered from that because USA is the country which is giving the most amount of sanctions compared to any other countries. Okay, so they're getting money from these countries and each country, is a, uh, they have 194 member countries and two associate members. Associate members means they don't have a say in decision making but they're uh, they, they're just part of the WHO. Okay. So it has its own executive body, its own secretariat, and its own World Health Assembly. So they need, depending on uh, which part of whether they belong to the secretariat or World Health Assembly, the executive board, how many times in a year they meet and what decisions they can take. Okay. So the World Health Organization, like I said, is being funded by different countries. So these are the regional offices of WHO. So somebody might ask you in the exam, how many regional offices are there? So there are six regional offices of the WHO and we belong to the Southeast Asia region and the headquarters is in New Delhi. So you have to remember at least where your region belongs to. So we belong to the Southeast Asia region. So this is the contributors to the WHO as of 31st March 2020. So United States contribute about 115.8 million dollars so when donald trump last year he said he's going to hold back the sanctions so it really hit a blow okay against the world health organization there has been a lot of controversy last year that the who has lost its integrity because how it was it has handled the uh, covid pandemic okay so this is the three organization structure of the WHO. So if you get a short note on WHO, you can talk about when it was founded, about World Health Day, about how many members are there, how many associate members are there. You can talk about the different regional offices and the organization structure and easily you can get five marks. Okay. So this is another uh, this is another international organization which is important, the UNICEF, okay, international, United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund. So the UNICEF, as the name suggests, it caters only to the uh, social social problems that are plaguing children. So this these are the things that it covers. Okay. It covers adolescent development, child protection, children uprooted, children with disabilities, communication for development, environment and climate change and gender equality. So it caters only to the needs of children and the social injustices that are happening to them. So UNICEF headquarters is in New York, WHO is in Geneva. So UNICEF also has a different organizational structure compared to the WHO, its own, uh, its own unique organizational structure, but it is part and parcel of the United Nations. So this is the mission statement of the UNICEF. Okay, it advocates for the protection of children's rights to help meet their basic needs and expand their opportunities to reach their full potential. So this is a bit complicated, so it's okay if you don't remember. Now, this is... Can anybody tell me this is the sign for which organization? Red Cross. Yeah, it's written in the slides, right? Red Cross. So how did the Red Cross came to be? Do you know how the Red Cross was started? This is the emblem, right? Red cross with arms of equal length and a white background. It's a visible sign of protection under the 1949 Geneva Con Conventions. As such, it's the emblem of the armed forces, medical services. But how did the Red Cross came to be? How was the Red Cross started? I think we studied this in school when we were younger. Monjur Lang Dakar. Yes, ma'am. Do you know how the Red Cross was started? No, ma'am, I cannot. Have you, do you know what happened in the First World War? No, what happens usually in wars? Ma'am, there are uh, many soldiers being injured and dying. Yeah, so many, many people get injured during the wars. What happens is a man named Henry Dunant, you have to remember his name, 
he saw that many people were being injured and there was no one to take care of the injured people. They were lying in the battlefield injured and there's no one to help them, no doctors, no nurses. So he decided to start this Red Cross Society with the aim that they're going to cater to the needs of these soldiers who are injured without those people being at war, the countries being at war, harming them. Okay, so they agreed under the Geneva Conventions in 1949, they decided that the Red Cross people from the Red Cross will be able to go into the battlefield, help the soldiers at war, and they will not be put into any harm. Okay, so from that, that, that is how the Red Cross grew. So after the Second World War, there were no more wars. What happens? The Red Cross it caters not only to the people suffering, soldiers suffering at war, they cater to natural disasters or anything which happens, which causes death and devastation. They, they go there and they cater their services. So from there, this is how the Red Cross started, okay? So everybody knows when they see this sign that it is the sign of the Red Cross, okay, Red Cross Society. So World Red Cross Day is celebrated on May 8th. So this is the fundamental principles of the Red Cross. So it has seven fundamental principles. So the Indian Red Cross Society, also we have our own Red Cross Society. It has about 1,100 branches all over the countries. So I have highlighted some of these in red so that these are the keywords that you can remember. So what does the Indian Red Cross Society do? It provides relief in times of disaster and emergencies and care of the vulnerable people and communities. So if anything happens, usually if you see what happens when we have floods, if we have cyclones, you will see the Red Cross emblem. There will always be one or the other few uh, from the Red Cross Society that will be there giving relief to these people who are suffering from these disasters or emergencies. So this is the history of the Red Cross. Okay. So the United Nations, another one is the United Nations Development Program, a development fund. This is, uh, this is also under the United Nations and what it does is it provides uh, funding to projects, especially to countries which are relatively poorer as compared to other countries and they have their own member countries like here there are 170 countries so it extends its services by giving the, the money the budget that it, get, it gets it, it allocates some of the budget to these countries which needs them in in a fight to eradicate poverty and protecting the planet okay but it extends its services only when that country asks for its help if the country does not ask for its help the UNDP will not do anything yeah. So International Labour Organization is another organization. This, as the name suggests, it caters to the rights of the workers. Okay, it gives an equal voice to workers, employers, and governments. So under the International Labour Organization, we have labour laws, which is which is valid in all those countries which are part of the the ILO. So this organization it protects the rights of the labourers. Another organization is the Food and Agriculture Organization. This one, if you talk about international labor laws, organization, remember the word labor, so it protects the rights of the laborers. And Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, which is based, I mean, the headquarters is there in Italy, in Rome, it tries to provide food security in order to, start, to defeat hunger. Okay, so it provides food security to the member countries. So there are 194 member countries and the staff under the FAO, they cater to these needs of these people. Okay. And the World Bank, have you heard of the World Bank? There are so many projects all over the world, health projects which are being funded by the World Bank. The World Bank is like, they, it, it gives loans to these countries to improve, okay, to work in a particular area of development. So it gives financial assistance in case if the countries want to tackle nutrition, if they want to tackle uh, poverty, they can go to the World Bank and the World Bank will give this money. And the last organization in the, is the USAID, the United Nations American uh, Agency Fund. Okay. So this will, it is specifically from the American people. So countries like America, these first world countries, since they are relatively more well to do than the third world countries, they set aside the money which they get from taxes from these people. They set aside for providing emergency aid to these countries who are in dire need of help, who are living in poverty and who needs strong government governance. Okay, so this agency, it provides, it provides funding to these countries who needs their help. Okay. So do you have any questions?
Do you have any questions? So international health, there's not much that you have to read in your book also. The, the only additional thing that is that written in your book is that about care funding, the Danida organization, uh, the Rockefeller Foundation. So these are foundations which are usually, most of them are based in the United States. These are the organization which gives sanctions to different projects in different parts, uh, in different countries, especially in countries like India, herbal countries like India, uh, in countries like South, in, which falls under Southeast Asia. They give sanctions and they help in the development of this country. Okay? People like Bill Gates are involved with uh, such organizations. So in the exam, the most common questions which come out of uh, this chapter, International Health, is in regards to the World Health Organization. Usually they give short work on World Health Organization. And another thing is, in context, since we are still in this ongoing pandemic of COVID-19, they might ask you about international health regulations and public health emergency of international concern. So if they ask you also, they might ask you in the practical exam, like what is the correct step? What does countries have to do if some, if some sort of pandemic happens? So you have to talk about how they have to build a, a surveillance system within the country which will detect, assess, report, and respond. And if they feel like there's an emergency, a health emergency is occurring in that country, they have to notify the WHO through the international health regulations. And from there, the WHO will take over and they will inform other countries and, and declare whether a, a certain disease is a public health emergency of international concern or not. Okay. So this is basically what they ask in the exam. So do you have any questions? Where is the health headquarter of the food agriculture organization? Ankit Saini. Yes, ma'am. Okay, can you tell me where is the headquarters of the FAO? Yes, ma'am. Where? Where is it? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> no, I'm asking where is the headquarters of the FAO? Just now I mentioned. Uh, uh, Italy, ma'am. Rome. Okay, so where is, the, where is the headquarters of UNICEF? New York. New York, okay. So you have to remember these things, okay? And then, like I told you, you just imagine a scenario. What will happen if another, what should have been done? You can, you can uh, do this UNICEF assignment. New York. Can you? You, you can, can do this assignment, okay? What should have been done regarding COVID-19? What was the correct, what did they do and how it should have been done? This is your assignment, okay? What should have been done, what was done during COVID-19 in regards to international health regulations? And what is your opinion, what should have been done? You submit it in through Google Classroom by by Wednesday, okay? This will count for your internal assessment. Note it down. What was done during COVID-19, when the, during the initial phases of COVID-19 in regards to international health regulations, and what you think should have been done, okay? This will count to your internal assessment. And you have to submit this by Wednesday. What is the date on Wednesday? Wednesday is 2nd June, right? So the assignment should be uh, give, uh, submitted in Google through Google Classroom by 2nd June. Who's the CR? Who's the CR? Yes, ma'am. We, we need to know. Oh, you're the one who texted me yesterday, right? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay, okay. Then, did you know the down the assignment? Uh, yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, what should have been done? What was done in the initial phase of COVID-19 during the, uh, in regards to international health regulations and what you think should have been done? Okay. Then you make sure all your friends CR is CR. You make sure that your friends know about the assignment and we have to submit it by uh, 2nd June by 1 p.m. Okay, no? And this will come to your uh, internal assessment. And if anybody submits later than 1 p.m., 
योग्य जीरो ओके okay?